but I like when he comes in. Yeah. First thing, he was like, huh, you're running out of gas, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you called me. You're running out of gas. But I don't know how Mutsuako originally started. Yeah. Like, can you break it down for us? Yeah, yeah I man. mean, uh, so, you know, I was picking up very, very quickly. But Jabba kept coming back, you know, he's that ancestor. <laughs> <laughs> freedom, there's no freedom if you can't feed yourself. Mm. So you South Africans, you're not free. Mm. Mm. Never been, okay? What's your favorite Jabba song of all time? Oh, you caught me off guard, man. Yeah, yeah you really caught me That's off guard. That's my job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the white farmers leave, we'll be fine in SA. If the white farmers leave, we, then we are going to enter civil war. Hmm. Because people are going to come into your house to get food. But I wish he gave him oh, a thicker skin, I man. Because he's very emotional, Casper, man. <sighs> very emotional. Isn't it a rapper thing, though? Nah, he's worse, bro. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've brought you a blast from the past. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I, was trying to, I was trying to explain uh, who Momo Lima is to um, um, who's our sign guy Simpio. He didn't know, and he's a hip hop head, bro. <laughs> but he didn't know who you are. <laughs> Please tell him, school him for two seconds. School him. I believe he was like famous for like three weeks or something. <laughs> <laughs> like 2007. <laughs> so I understand. Man, he's a Motoko <laughs> icon, man. You know, a lot of people count him in the top tens and top fives. Yeah. Uh, till true. today, definitely. You know, not in just Motoko, in hip hop yeah. generally, in SA. Yeah. It's a big deal, but I like when he comes in. Yeah. First thing, he was like, huh, you're running out of gas, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you called me. You're running out of gas. <laughs> And then you were like, yeah, hello, you with David Carr. He's like, you see? They're going down. What's up, Nima? What's up, Nima? What's up, Nima? What's up, bro? What's up, King? Legend. Oh, Thank you so much. Man. You know, everybody's like, uh, you should go to Mac G. Yeah. <laughs> and I just got an invite from dude. He was like, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are doing a brilliant job. I'm Thank saying, you, man. Yeah, Thank you, bro. You've changed the game. Yeah. Yeah, we've always, I mean, we come from uh, record deals from EMI. We got the worst of it, you know? Mm. And uh, uh, in those days, independence was a dream. Mm. You couldn't think of, if you were thinking independent, uh, they would just tell you, wait for two years. Mm. Uh, this one is a bit drunk. He's still famous. <laughs> You'd not get a deal anywhere in this town. Look how big Joe Wick is. Mm, yeah. So, you know, um, to find a, a place where uh, we find some independence in the media space, mm. it's so great. And big up to you, brothers. Thank you, man. We're going to get to the farming shortly, man. That's cool. But what you been up to apart from the farming? Um, making babies. <laughs> how many are we on now? <laughs> I'm, I'm behind. I'm only on four. It's not good. I mean, it's what farmers do. What else can you do, man? Besides That's farming, true, right? Yeah. You gotta plant the yeah. seed. Yeah. <laughs> procreate, procreate, procreate. Plant, 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 plant there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to chat about um, Mutsuako, bro. Yeah. Because uh, we pretty much started the first time at the same time at YFM. I was yeah. just starting at YFM. Yeah. And I used to play Momo Lima's music. That's how I got introduced to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'd meet at gigs and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know how Mutsuako originally started. Yeah. Like, can you break it down for us? Yeah, yeah I man. mean, uh, uh, ooh, everybody has his own story. Of course, hip hop has no, um, everywhere. Everybody claims hip hop in his own. Um, street. Mm. Everybody will always say it started in East Street, but I'm sure it's the same in Brooklyn. Everybody will claim. Yeah, <laughs> no, sure. it was not on the third street, it was on the sixth. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we heard the word Mutsuako, of course, let's give a bit of context, right? Um, the 90s, uh, 1994, it's freedom, the world is upside down in South Africa. Um, Kwaito, boom. Kwaito was so crazy, it's bigger than anything else we'll ever see ever again. You know, Kwaito was in every everywhere in our lives but at the same time uh gangster rap or american hip hop was now really making it globally right so this is the rise of tupac this is the rise of the nazis and uh, and the biggies and so on so uh of course 
go back a little bit. BJ Jesse Jeff and the Fresh Prince, uh, the Tone Logs, uh, Criss Cross was huge. It really turned, uh, it all turned us into hip hoppers, you know? Mm. Jump, jump, mm. the uh -huh. man that'll make uh -huh. you. Yeah, um, MC Hammer came into the picture, uh, Can't Touch This, uh, Vanilla Ice. So that culture in Mafiking was big because we had Bob TV mm. and it was playing everything American. Mm. Um, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air mm. and all these stuff. So, Everybody was getting into hip hop like that, but then Kwaito came up. And Kwaito comes is like, Hey, bees, hey, moo, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blocked the whole spot. Yeah. So, you know, we go with the years, you know, and um, one day you have to sit and think, like, but, you know, people hate hip hop. They really hate, people hated rappers. You know, if you were rapping, they said, oh, but we get like a lot of stage. Aramo stage. Aramo stage. Yeah. Yeah. It was really serious back then, you know. They would actually give you a beating mm. uh, for wearing a baseball cap or something like that. Wait, you get a beating? Yeah, definitely. You definitely get a beating for trying to act American, you know. Um, so, 95, 96, around about that time. Uh, that's when Stone had joined Tebe and them with the Bongo Muffin. Mm. And, you know, he started gaining a little bit of pro prominence. And the way he explains it, there was some promo they had to do, uh, where he had to do something like, this is the remix, this yes. is the... And he just changed it into and it's like, this is Motoako, this is Motoako. Mm. You know, so that's how the word becomes popular. Wow. But he was not the only one doing Sotswana raps, you know. Prof from Buffy clearly was. And um, Prof and Blacksmith. Mm. Um, the... They had hooked up with Glenn Lewis and they were doing something at that time. And um, there was a guy in Botswana called Nomadic. He was also releasing some stuff in Botswana language. And this is like 96 and hmm. so on. Wow. So it wasn't really taking off. Yes, yes. Yeah, but some people were trying it out because when we thought hip hop, it was English. Mm. You couldn't do hip hop in any other language other than English. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, we were still competing with who can speak better English, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, English was still a measure of intelligence back then. So... Uh, now we have a lot of fools who speak English. <laughs> it's all the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're all exposed. <laughs> we're so, all exposed. <laughs> so much for Model C education. <laughs> yeah, bro. So, um, yeah, but um, this is the 90s, right? So it, it was really just not until Jabba came in, you know? Hmm. Uh, Jabba, uh, I think they had signed in with Verbal Assassins when they were still at uh, St. Albans um, and um, through Chico. And but 99, when he left school, he went to LMB. I was at um, JCE um, in Parktown. He used to hook up there. And then I don't know how he did it. He managed to get a deal with EMI CCP2 mm. through Vosilio. And Vosilio was like, hey, who are you? No, I'm Jeva Man. Like, mm, we do a bit of Pantola and a bit of hip hop. You're a hip hop Pantola. Wow. Like, you're crazy. Wow. You gave him the name. Yeah, he's like, no, you're crazy, man. Wow. Like, oh, it's Jeva Man. I was like, okay. And then they did the album introduction, and uh, they didn't even tell him the album is out. He just heard somebody he saw the album at OK. He ran there to go buy his own CD. When he got it, it was like hip hop and so on. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's how it happened. Wow. OK, yeah. But um, when he came into the game, um, you know, Kweto was now at his highest. You know, Tupac, uh, TKZ was killing it. Mendoza was coming in. Now, like, this is like 99, 2000, like, there was no space for rap. Hmm. You go to a rap concert, they'll just, they'll just stone you. Literally, hmm. basically, they'll just bottle you out of the gig. Uh, there are a few guys who were doing some rap back then. I don't remember them. Uh, so some Zimbabwean guy, I don't remember. Before Mischief? Mischief. No, before Mischief. Oh, yeah. um, I'll tell you if I do remember him. But anyway, Jeva came in and, and uh, that, after that summer, he went back home. He's like, hey, you know, uh, I was still kicking it with Morafi, uh, which was Tori. Myself, Cooley, and KG, mm. you know, and we had a, a name called L Tribe. Mm. Yeah, L Tribe. And, um, but then there was this group that came out, Tribe. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I was yes. like, oh, these guys have messed up our flow now. We don't know what to call ourselves. So Gemma came and like, like, you know, I'm Rafi. I'm like, yeah. Then, then wow. that's how Rafi oh, started. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Then Gemma did that. And then, then he's just like, dudes, man, you guys need to come with me. Like, dog, what do you mean? Like, I'm gonna pay for your bus ticket. Let's go to Josie. Let's see yeah, what let's see what we can do. Mm. Yeah, then that's it. We just jumped on a bus, rocked up here. We did a few recordings for his next album, Yamav Town. It was a long slog. The following year we moved in with him while he was still studying at at um at Rao. Mm. Yeah, and then we stayed a whole year with him uh, in his flat. 
um, it was tough times then, you know. Sure. People don't know how tough it was during those record deals days, mm. though. Yeah, you, you, yeah, like if record, if record deal, if record companies were not listening, that's it. Your dream was it's dead. rap. It's rap. That's a rap. There's no internet. There's no home studio. There's nothing like that. Mm. You know, if there are record, if you don't get a record deal, you, you don't make it. Finish. Mm, mm. One in a million makes it. So, um, Jeva took us in and um, we hustled together like that. You know, it was hard, but. Um, um, we pushed through, you know, uh, the story is long, we'll write about it one day. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, it's through his um, his vision mm. that uh, the Motoko thing picked up because he started pulling in a lot of guys, trying to create one big thing. Mm. When we go out on a show, we're all there together because he's like, look, I feel isolated. Every time I go to a gig, it's all the Zulu guys with the Akwaito and me mm. and my Setswana. Mm-hmm. So at least... If there's a lot of us. There's a lot of us, it's, it's much better. And, you know, he put a lot of money on the table mm. to make it happen from the beginning of his career wow. right to the end, you know. Mm. Like, from Morafi right up to Casper, there's like a hundred people mm. that Jabba put on, you know. Wow. And I always say Jabba could have been one of the first guys to drive Ferraris in the game because mm. he was the very first in hip-hop Holy with endorsements. Yeah, 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 more, more state tasks and yeah. stuff, yeah. Oh, but he was putting yeah. it back in the Roots game. or whatever, yeah. yeah. He put it all of it back in the Jeez, case. All of man. it. All of it. So we, we can never forget that. So, you know, Motoko came with that first. And on the second leg, it was YFM. YFM um, gave us an opportunity, you know. Uh, back then, um, uh, who's the sister of ours? Lee. Uh, yeah. Lee Kasumba. Kasumba. Lee called us every day, each and every one of us, dropped a message and SMS for everyone, checked on us, check how we were doing, took us out for lunches, made sure that we like family because when they moved from Uganda first, they lived in town for a little bit and then they moved to Mouth Town. Mm. So she had lived for a few years in Mouth Town before she came to Joburg. So we they had that camaraderie. Mm. But then, yeah, she made sure that we were going to the front line all the time. Wow. So big up to Lee Kasumba for that. But uh, everybody else embraced us, you know. Uh, but Fresh, we were very close with Jabba because he was a people's person, you know. And um, yeah, Bad Boy T, Lee, um, a Root Boy, Root Boy. Uh, Sansa, Sansa. Yeah, all those cats, yeah, they, 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 they put us on. I mean, you could do a song now, and go to YFM and drop it in place in the evening, you know? Wow. Yeah, so they, and you know, YFM, that's before, YFM was still a community station then, mm. you know, but our our music was able to blow nationwide because of Jeez. that platform, you know? And um, yeah, I, my album came out in 2000, 2007. Dukes had already been out, Morafi had already been out, Jebo was now on top of the game. And uh, I think by the time I came out, there was a, almost now a, Motoko exhaustion and like <laughs> too many of these niggas. Hey, chill with all that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need so many of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now, bro, what happened? So you, you, I think you said you're part of Murafi, but yeah. we were introduced to Murafi as three guys. Yeah. What happened between you know when you were there and then? Because uh, um, always been the general. We had a mission, and um, it took us ten years. And um, when we started, maybe there was twenty of us. Mm. You know, and um, when we were at the last door, we had to make that decision that uh, formula works with three guys better oh, than four. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. what formula? The music. The music. So it's better when there's three people. Yeah, there's three rappers and a, and a vocalist. Mm. Oh. Two rappers and a, yeah, two rappers and a, and a vocalist. It, but I think, I mean, you, the formula you're work better. doper than, I mean, well... No, there's no doubt. How did it get to you, you being the one God? Because <laughs> I, I, I had I made those decisions. Everybody else who had left before, I had made those decisions. Like, we don't need him. Mm. Okay. Until I had to make the decision, like, okay, I'm stepping out. You guys go. And um, then we had a year where we worked together towards getting the deal. Mm. And I was still with the group, but I had already quit. Mm. So we had to put on together a demo go record, raise the funds, go to Clark's Dog, record it, go back, get it to Tasso, mix it. And then they, they came with it and, and brought it to Lance. Um, and that, at that time, I had already started farming full time. And so, it made sense to me, you know, because um, um, I, 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 I easily understand that music has very little to do with talent, but it everything to do with personality. Okay. Yeah, the people need to relate. Doesn't matter how talented you are, it's nothing to do with it. That's why hip hop, right now, it's full of people who are so famous, but we don't know what music they do. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. But it's always been like that. Yeah. The more it's now exposed on TV <laughs> and it's more visual, it has become even more prominent. Yes. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to have a single... You don't have so to have so you didn't choose yourself because you felt you lacked the personality. Yeah, I just always knew I lacked the personality. I don't like people. Um, I don't like the attention. <laughs> It's just all sucky. You'd rather be around crops. <laughs> yeah, I mean, be more interested than people. Yeah, cabbage is. Tomorrow it's still at the same place. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So, you know, so I stayed like, um, I think a year and I, I started picking, I picked up quickly, you know, because I had grown up in a farm, you know, mm. and um, there was some. Stuff happening at home. Uh, we had lost our house in the town. You know, my dad had been in uh, in um, um, this legal battle with with the government. Okay, uh, that's another story wow. for another day. Mm. Um, because when the ANC government came in in '94, they wanted to um, uh, what is the word they use? Expropriate. Yes. Yeah, yes. our farms because eh. we're from Botswana. You know. Mm. Yeah, but it's easy to bully black people. You know. Mm. Yeah, mm. because when you're afraid of black white people, it's so funny. When you walk around, you find like John Smart, DF Malan on the streets, you know. But when you go to MAF, the first thing they did is destroy anything Mangope. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it, somebody says, you know, that's how abuse works. You know, if your boss hits you at home, at work, you come back and hit your wife. No. Oh, and your yes. wife hits the kids. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. you know, you know, so anyway, that's a long story. So he had been in that battle with them, and uh, uh, things were. So I said to dad, no, um, I want to join you in the farm and help you. I said, no, okay, if you're ready, we can do it, you know. So I had that advantage of having grown up what in two a, What age is this? Um, 22. 22, okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, no, um, while I was at university, I did some research. Um, it was a competition for a uh, department of finance on um, priorities of the state, of the provincial state. And when I was doing my BCom and then part of my research, I just re realized the potential of agriculture, you know, in a big way. You know? So you know, if you didn't choose to step aside, do you think you would have still gone back to farming? Um, I think part, part of stepping aside was pursuing this farming thing. Mm. For me, in the long term, farming was going to sustain me. You know, music was like five years, but farming was forever. And you knew that at that age? Yes. That's why I, I did it then. Okay. I knew that Ahead of the calf, today I'll be Momulim here. Hmm. There was no pressure from your parents saying, get a no, real job. No, my parents had never told me anything in my life. Just, what do you want to do? I want to go to the moon. Okay. Do your thing. But how so, do you figure out? Because, I mean, dog, you've been working 10 years to yeah. get to this level. Now yeah, you are, 20 years. You're at the it's last close, hurdle. Yeah. It's so close. Yeah, smell it. Yeah. You can Touch smell it. it. Yeah, I mean... Uh, the, and you could see that this is not going to last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know... Um, Kuli is basically my nephew. Sure. Literally, not basically. He's literally by generation. Mm. Yeah, he gets the whole. Todi Kimwanakamangwan is my auntie's child. We grew up in the same house since we were born. Mm -hmm. uh, and KG uh, grew up two houses from Kuli's house. Yeah. So he went to school with Todi. Mm -hmm. uh, so we used to play together, all four of us, from the time we were kids. Mm -hmm. So coming into our teenagehood and to the age of blow up, you could not separate the business from family, mm. you know, and their success was always my success. If Murafi blows up, I'm blowing up. Oh, I get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah you. that was the thinking. And uh, there was never like falling out, more is there. We stick together. Like I say, even after I quit, I work for an extra year to put together the final piece. Mm. Yeah, so we can get the deal, you know. And even those days, it was even so worse. Every time they made a meeting or had a deal, or something was happening. Yeah. They would actually travel back to Mav Town, catch a taxi to go have a meeting with me, the four of us, so we can have a new strategy. They will catch a taxi back to Joburg. No, but I want to know, you know what, so, how did you know like this music thing is not sustainable? Like, How did you come to that conclusion? I don't think it was about music not being sustainable. It was just an issue of... Um, I knew farming was so much more bigger. I mean, ah. uh, there's 8 billion people who eat every day. I get you. At least twice. And you see that at home you're comfortable. We're making a living from this. This is my family uh, thing. Heritage. My grandfather, yeah, it's my heritage. It's there. I grew up in a farm and I know what it is there. So wow. for me, it was and there's no people. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so um, 
the, the decision was more about that. It was ah. about the future. And I was like, um, I know I can do this quick. So, you know, I was picking up very, very quickly. But Jabba kept coming back, you know. He's that ancestor. <laughs> <laughs> You drive all the way to Muff Town, go to the farm there, would sit down with buddies, I don't know, um, the kettle headers. Mm. Yeah, we're at the farm there, we sit under the farm, we have a plant and sit the whole night and you'd be like, dude, you need to come back. Hmm. The game needs you. We're like, dude, the game don't need me. You guys are cool. We've done the hard work and we're about to blow up. So I'm here. It's like, yeah, I see everything you do here, but the game needs you, bro. Hmm. Kept coming back, coming, coming back. The last time he came, um, Proverb was out with... Um, Letter to Mike. No, no, no. What was the first album? My manuscript? The Book of Proverb. Uh, the Proverb. The Book, the Book of, of Proverb. Proverb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Pro Kid was out. Phew. Uh, what Tales and Heads. Tales and Heads. Yeah. Uh, Morafa was out. Hey. Marabul. Dukes was out. Hey. Mafuku mm. And uh, Jabba was trying to come out that same year. And he was like, dude, it's tough. This year. <laughs> 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 At least help me. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, was chilling there having a blunt and he plays this song by Amu. If you see me walking down the oh, street. Oh my God, I go crazy. And I start rapping there immediately. Don't be too friendly, I'll be here. Some people are going to be too friendly, I'll be here. I'm going to be too friendly, I'll be here. I'm going to be too friendly, I'll be here. At that time, you know, every time I was working on the fields, because I was doing mainly vegetables. Yes. I'd write songs, you know, like a song like Fuck Off. I'd write it while I'm working on the fields. Yeah. Yeah, with that silent and those birds and wow. life was almost... You know, mm. and I, I used to interact a lot with the Rastas as well. They had a lot of influence in my younger days. Um, there were a big Rasta movement in Muff Town at those times. Did time, you so. ever write any raps for da Java? No, I never read anything for, for Java. Java was a writer in, in his own. You never wrote anything for anyone? No, no, I've never. Mm. I've never. Uh, I think Tody, um, growing up, he started so many rap groups. Okay. You know, uh, he was that cat who could get three guys who knew nothing about rap, teach them how to rap each, give them a style each, <laughs> write a verse for them each. You know, yeah, hey, Toadie was, Toadie was crazy. But I would have never been in rap music if it wasn't for Toadie because, yeah. you know, living on the farms, I didn't have many friends. Yeah. When I go to town, I go to Toadie's house. Yeah. And everything, all the time, all he wanted to do was music ever since he was a kid. Wow. And did you know Cooley would be the breakout star? Cooley was a star since he was a kid. Mm. You know, yeah, even before we were rapping, he was just popular like that. He he had a popping pop personality, mm. you know. It always seemed Parents like... liked them, mm. and you know, you know what I mean. Mm. And when we grew older, the, all the girls liked them. Mm. You know? So um he everybody always could always see that um could he would actually mm. be a breakup. But his personality has always been uh introverted, you know. Yes. He found oh. a lot of com comfort in the group. Other than trying to break out, it was very hard to get him to a position where he, to break up on his own, break out on his own. You know, he's always found um, so much more comfort within the group mm. set up, you know. Um, because, I mean, even in our teenage years, he was the youngest in a way. Yes. His lower brother. And we, we like looked out for him. And so we worked around that, you know, and um, just, uh, just telling him we had to, every time I've been in a hostel, a boarding school, and I come in holidays, you have to call him, look, we have a meeting on a Friday, we organize them, you know, general, get the things moving. So I uh, would buy singles, CD singles, uh, then do a CD singles. So that's where we got our instrumentals. I mm. had to buy lots of them to create an album. So once we have enough singles, this happened every holidays. We have, during the year, we use our packet money to buy singles, we get instrumentals, enough to fill up a TD, TDK tape. TDK tape. Yeah. yeah. So once we uh, do a beat selection, we write songs for all the songs. Then we go to um, radio to dub from CD to tape. So we put on the mics mm. and uh, wow. we hook it up and then we make a full tape. Okay. So there's no backups. There's no doubling. There's nothing. We have to get it right from the first get. take. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All, every time. So this is what we did every every holidays. Until we perfected the art, you know? Uh, that's why even when we started recording... It was simple. We, yeah, it was very simple. Mm. We didn't have to go back. We, we just could go in the studio, all of us at once, and hit once. So when you're farming, don't you miss all of that? Don't you miss being yeah, in the studio? Yeah, of course, at that time, when I was still young and starting studying farming, rap was still popping, like I say. Yeah. Songs just came to my head. I could write So verses. you never thought, like, let me leave this farming shit? Uh, farming had a future, bro. Farming mm. had a future. And uh, it, 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 there was a purpose. There was a cause. And, you know, I say I was... 
with the Rastas and uh, at, into Fidel Castro and Che Guevara and uh, uh, Lumumba and I was into uh, Ama Cabral, I was into Sankara. I was, wow. Yeah, you know, so my mind was, and you know, all the socialist revolutions had to do with agrarian uh, reform, you know, how the people must feed themselves first. Mm. Freedom, there's no freedom if you can't feed yourself. Mm. So you South Africans, you're not free. Mm. Mm. You've never been, okay? Yeah. If you're not able to grow your own food, it's no way you can be free, mm. okay? So these were the ideas that was running my mind, you know, and uh, Marafi were guys that just wanted to... Vibes. On a vibe, man, get yeah. some pussy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much, man. <laughs> it's too much, man. <laughs> uh, so, Chaco Varas, and just, so, farming was good, you know. So, yeah. Jeva, you know, so he comes, he plays this song, he's like, dude, let's make a deal. I drive you to Joburg now, tomorrow we're recording at Amu Studio. Mm. The following day, I'm bringing you back right here and I'm paying you money. Yeah. Like, you can do that for me? He's like, definitely. Mm. We got in the car immediately, he had this. Maroon car called the Zamborghini. Yeah. It was a five series. Sure. Um, Zamborghini. Josie Fast got to Amu Studio. Bah. Uh, I think he was still staying. Um, yeah. Mm. Close to Eagles Canyon there. Okay. Yeah. We got there. You know, you get there and, you know, Amu just gives you that, like, another one. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Swanner guys. Yeah. There's too many <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I start hit the verse. He's like, ooh. Shit. Something there. Mm. Okay, that was cool. In the evening, we were like getting drunk, getting blunted, and Jam was like, okay, let's pass by Robin Day by um what's the studio? Mm. Downtown studio. No, 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 Robin Studio. Robin um Jazz Works. Jazz Works. Jazz Works. Okay. Uh, the yes. Yeah, yeah. So he was doing the album there with Steve. So he went there to go listen to the other tracks. And then when we got there, they played this song, yeah. Um uh who's this cat now? Why would I forget? Battle Cat. Mm. Tango, uh, Tango, Gora and Tango Gora. Yeah, they play this beat. Uh, and I was like, ah, I have something. Do you want to record Mo? I was like, yeah, man. Let me jump in and hear something. That's when I recorded uh, Fuck Off. Hmm. Yeah, I just hit Classic. it once. Um, I remember Squad was still busy with the album that uh, they were there in the studio that day. I think they were in Studio Two, uh, we were in Studio One. And when I was getting to the second stanza, they all came into my studio. I was like, yo, it's this cat recording on that side. Mm. You know, and when he came into the room, and I was like, oh. And when, when I saw them and the reaction, I think it was the very first time in my life when I thought, yeah, you got this. Yeah, 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 yeah I you, got this. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> You yeah, got yeah. this, bro. You know, but uh, <laughs> then I did that, went back to the farms, got on with my life. Um, <laughs> until Jemma's album uh, came out, you know, YBA to Northwest. Yes. Yeah, and, um, and uh, it put me in a... In a uh, put me in the spotlight very quickly, mm. you know. And I was like, ah, that's the fourth member of Marafia, yeah, you know what, I do, I do, I do. Mm. Yeah, you know, and um, coincidentally, I had a deal with the state uh, to plant sunflowers then uh, with f &B Bank. Uh, sorry to mm. uh, advertise those. Uh, no, it's fine. No, no, it's, fine. No, no, it's a deal that happened. Yeah, yeah. so, and then um, uh, the bank would come up with a 60% loan, 40% uh, oh. the government would give us a, a grant. And um, yeah, and then we'd plan to we'll do this this job, and uh, we did the job, and guess what? Uh, the government didn't come over the forty percent. Ah, so, government. You know, the bank pushed my loan up to eighty percent, uh, so I can get the job done. But came the last mile when I had to do the harvest. Now I didn't even have a cent to work, <laughs> and you know, like a crop takes like six months. It's mm. hard work, you know. And uh, I was so angry. I was so angry, man. Like, how, how much was the deal worth? No, man, it's still cheap then. I mean, I think, I think it was like 200,000. 200, oh, okay, 000. okay. Yeah, okay. but when you when you have nothing, it's mm, everything it's, to it's you. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, and you're 23 years old. Mm. <clears throat> you're like, this is my mm. entrance into the game. I'm big time. From here, I'm bankable. I'm going big. Boom. So they pulled a stunt on me, and uh, they didn't come up with the money. Um, the crop didn't do well. There was bad damage. I mm. took too long to harvest, and the the crop was bad, and I think I uh, harvested like 0.6 oh, tons a man. hectare, it's... which is not good. On sunflower, you need an average of about a ton to mm. do well. So I had a little bit of shortfall with the bank. Bank wanted their money. Government didn't want anything to do with me. Oh. That's how I recorded fuck off, you know. I was so angry. Mm. So... Yeah, because the song is still relevant even today. I mean, <laughs> it's more relevant. More relevant. It's, it's more Next relevant. Year is coming even back. More, it's yeah. coming back big fuck, time. Yeah. yeah, you know, I was like, fuck off. You know, like... You can't like abuse me like this, you know. Mm. Um, but that's fine. So we did that. Um, 
uh, and then I had a bit of a shortfall and I was just crazy. What's your favorite Java song of all time? Oh, you caught me off guard, man. Yeah, yeah you really caught me That's off guard. That's my job, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plowing, me. I'm plowing. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it will have to be Khudira Khalam. Yes! Khudira <laughs> Khalam! Yes! Yo! Yo! <laughs> you don't know Khudira Khalam? Yes! yes. Wait. No, no, no. When I look, look up to that, that, that yourself, Khudira Khalam. To the Fatsila. We are familiar about the ABCs, private school kids. We about the IEBs, the ABCs. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. I was we listening to it last week. We were in studio with them actually when we recorded. Wow. We just wow. recorded our album and I had never seen Jebba on that level before. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, yeah. And you what know. he's saying is still relevant. Till today. Till this day. Yeah, so Jebba was a beast in that way, you know. Sure. So, oh. so you know. Yeah, hey, I thought I was the only person in Asia who likes that song, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big song, man. Yo. All the Jabba fans really know. Mm. So, you know, like, that's the first thing didn't work out. And now hip hop was popping. And you like think, like, there's a. This God just telling you, follow your dream, you know, mm. go do your do. Yeah. So, that's how I came back and um, signed a deal with Jabba. Jabba's like, dude, you know, you hear a way of, of tricking me, you know? Mm. So, it's like, I'll send you for one album. <laughs> <laughs> now we've moved from one song to one. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> then you can go back. Yes, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> you really, really sure? Yeah. Just one album, Mo, and then you go. So uh, that's a whole chapter. Yeah. But point is, after I did my first album, got two summer nominations. Wow. After the summers, I packed up my bag and I left. And I, I never forget when I was picking up my bag, Skabomo came to my house. He was looking for one thing or another. He's like, where are you going, man? I was like, no, my work is done here. Yeah. I'm leaving. Like, where are you going? I was like, I'm going back home, bro. Yeah. yeah. I just came here to do this one thing and I'm done. <laughs> It's like, who gets done in this game? <laughs> you at just started. Hey, well, when you're at the, the top, top. Did yeah. you at the top. Hey, man, I love your mind, man. It's special, eh? Like, yeah, very, bro. I'm done. Yeah, but no, man, you know, every time I would smoke, then I would get a, like, paranoid, all the traffic. Like, dude, I must go back to my cabbage, eh? Here, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your farm, bro. So yeah. what are you farming? How many hectares do you have? Yeah. What does it look like? Um... When I, I just, born I just in the, in yeah, when I was born in the 80s, my dad has re- had already been in the farming business for a long time, uh, working for government and farming, like a lot of people started. But uh, at the time when I was born, he managed to lease uh, a, a real farm. You know, oh. I think it was about, it's about a 520 hectares big. <laughs> so it's very small. It's very small. Oh, I must tell you. Yeah, it's too small. Um, but it was big enough then. And uh, I think a few Wait, years later. 520? Yeah. It's yeah. small. Yeah, it's small. Small. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Like, uh, farming is a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah, you really need the numbers. You know, you really need yeah, the yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah can't so, we get a fan in here, man? Yeah. Niggas boiling, man. Yeah, man. Hey, man. You've been sweating. You put my plant, man. I got more money, man. I'm made. Ah, but he's to this. He's a farmer. Yeah, he's yeah, no, nice. heat is not a problem for me. Yeah. It's just like maybe it looks, yeah. it looks bad on TV. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. Yeah. Anyway, um, so a few years later, he managed to build a house on the farm and move the whole family there. So okay. yeah, primary school was a real bitch. You know, yeah. like we had to wake up early in the morning, drive 30 kilometers to town in the oh. afternoon, go back to the farm, weekends on the farm, no electricity, you know. So um, it was a real tough uh, environment. But after you grow up, then you realize, oh, thanks, Dad, because now I know Thank you. everything. Thank yeah, you. You know, I can the whole survive, thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is ingrained in my system. Yeah. Yeah, to become a farmer for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, like a, it's like a backhand slap. So how many, so, how many, how many hectares you got now? No, we're still keeping on the farm. It's, it's, it's a family farm. It's not my farm. Um, it's the family farm. The, fortunately, we just lost my dad last December. So, oh, shit. Um, I'm practically right. like in charge, but on behalf of the whole family. Yeah. Yeah. So my sister is there. She's doing the farm management. Uh, she calls every 10 minutes. She calls just now. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Man. So I'm working from Joburg now. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've, a, and you guys do a, vegetables. I know you got a yeah. farmer's market as well. Yes. So, yeah, I'll come to that Why I'm in Joburg. Um, so the farm is there. We've been working there for doing a bit of cattle, did goats, bit of chicken, like a mixed farm, you know? Beautiful. Yeah. So, and, um, and and crops. So, you know, we've, it's, been, it's been up and down. Farming is not... Um, for the majority of people in the business, it's not an easy job. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. There's some people who want, want to make it as if it's uh, they have arrived. Uh, but some of them are because uh, 
they have been fortunate to be beneficiaries of corruption, you know. People wash their money on the farm on the farms now. It's a thing. So Oh, they wash money. Yeah, they oh, wash they money everywhere. Money, I wonder why place. they haven't started with podcasts. They wash money everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting. Okay, so how would you wash money? How how would you wash money in a farm? We're hoping for business. Uh, <laughs> come. <laughs> Wash it. Yeah. Yes, you, Edwin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Same way you do in the club. <laughs> Same way. Yeah, I mean, um, um, it's very, you know, all the people who are um, making some sort of success in any other kind of industry, they always end up in farming because that's what their tax advisor advises them to do. Because now if you buy two cows and... Um, um, in three years, they're six. Two cows is two bottles of... Grandeur in yeah. the club, okay? So, yeah. All right. Yeah, but um, in a year now they're four. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and um, in four years they've doubled, you know, their value. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, point is if you have now eight cows and now you come back to me as the tax collector and say, I have three, how am I going to prove it? Mm. True. And then all the unwashed money, you keep it in the couch, in the farm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, we are simplifying well, after it. After you done washing it. <laughs> no, I mean, once, once you, whether you're selling it at auction or you're selling it <laughs> privately or whatever you're doing. Um, Please explain. I'm, I'm laughing, but I'm a bit lost. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit more compl- complex yes, than yes. that. You, so know? you can refer to the needs businessman to then yeah. say the yeah. money's from there. I they think pay. To, to simplify it, let's say... Um, it's very difficult to track money in that space. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And that's what washing money is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. So, so, but anyway, uh, they, they track the stuff. Um, farming is... Um, Have you checked out um, Jeremy Clarkson's farmhouse? Yes. Not farmhouse. It. I yeah, think he had, a, he had a, a series where he was yeah, on learning private how to farm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he was buying a tractor and getting Fucking started. Fucking beautiful. I yeah. love yeah. that shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I understood. You know, this is no child's play. I love what Jeremy did there because... He go, he experienced it as it yes, goes. Like, yes, and it's so entertaining. <laughs> I didn't think this thing was so hard. I spent all my money. <laughs> so he bought he bought a cow. I don't know what the female cow, right? And her whole job is just to produce more uh, 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 cows for him, right? And he got this very expensive bull. Yeah. But now he's invested so much money in getting this cow pregnant. They've done all the things and whatever. She's just not getting pregnant. <laughs> so how the season ends? They're like, bro, you gotta have to. You know, get, get rid of it because it's, it's just chow. Yeah, it's just it's a dud. It's just chowing the grass. It's not producing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not doing its job. Yeah, it's oh. So he looks at the camera. It's like, honey, we've got a new pet. <laughs> 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 yeah, he bought a tractor. Yeah. 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 He couldn't get the parts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what farming is all. It's um, too many moving parts. Too many things can go wrong because you're farming with nature. And farming against, against nature, nature at the same time. How's the thing? Is it interrupting the yeah. sound? Yeah, it is. But uh, yeah, but it's fine, eh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, cool. Yeah. So, for instance, this weekend, um, the whole farm went on fire. Our farm. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. The whole farm. Yeah. It happens every year. There are some Fuck. fools who are always, um, and it always happens all, all over the weekends. Every year, when it dry season, expect to be felt fires. Okay, so it's obviously drunk people. I don't know if it's on purpose or whatever they do, mm. but fortunately, we'd already harvested. So mm. there wasn't so much loss. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you are there and it's happening, it, it looks bad because felt fire is... But uh, we're used to it, you know, as long as there's no losses, no animals lost and no crops lost. Um, the rains come and uh, it's green again. Knowing, you know? no, knowing what you know now, do you regret um, the decision you made to choose farming? No, I, I regret ever choosing hip-hop. Okay. Because I would have been so much further farming, you know. Ah, I yeah, get you. because um, I've lost a lot of credit from people who were supposed to help me. Who just say, "But like, this guy is just a famous, he's a celebrity." Oh, so I right, get you. Trying to, trying to yeah. get undermine into our profession. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and for too long, even it still happens even till today. You know, every time something comes up at the department, it's like, "Hey, this guy has been pushing guys. Let's giving him hundred cows there." Like, "Hey, isn't this guy a rapper? <laughs> he's benefiting that." Uh, arts and culture arts and culture yes. yeah mm. when my name comes up at arts and culture I was like isn't this guy a farmer mm. it's benefiting dead <laughs> they did the same to Jeremy they are like stick to TV yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah everybody's territorial like that so mm. we had not moved to that world of people doing multiple things and today it's a thing you know yeah. you yeah. can be that and that and of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. coming up to. it was very strange you know and uh, of course 
natural. It's just always a lot of jealousy, you know. People Wait. think you'll tell, you'll tell their farm wives. No, <laughs> just leave me alone. I'm just, I'm just trying to... <laughs> did, you stay t- me, did you stay in touch with any of the guys that were in the game like during uh, your farming days? Like, did you stay in touch I with didn't anyone? Know, I didn't know anybody, man. I nah. didn't have time for nah. trying to get around and be one of the guys now, man. Nah. Yeah, I had one thing to do one year and I was out. Bro, you're living my life, bro. <laughs> Some days oh, I just want to pack up and go back to the farm, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. It's quiet. Yeah, hey, man. It's life. It's pure quality guys, of life. You know, yeah. You leave it here, <laughs> it's still here, right? It doesn't want, it doesn't drink, you may see, it doesn't want... It's not drink. crying, you know, like... Uh, hey, guys, can I go back to the farm? I've hitched a million subscribers. My job is done. <laughs> Your job is done. My job is done, done. guys. Oh, it, I just want to uh, farm, yeah. bro. Ah, it's hard work, it. man. It's hard work. You must know, farming is... When you're, 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 you're basically dealing with life, yeah. you know, whether it's plants or animals, that means 24-7, 365 care. When you're a farmer, you can't go on holiday. Mm. Okay, you can't take you can't take time off. Anything can happen. Animals can get sick. Mm. You know, um, there can be like um, uh, what you call this thing, locusts mm. can come overnight. Mm. There could be a warm infection. It, you know, there can be heat wave. Everything dies. Anything can happen any day. You it said- can be hailstorm. It can be too much rain. It can be low rain. Why choose all that trouble, man? <laughs> it's purpose, bro. Purpose, it's passion. Purpose. People must always passion. have a need to eat. That's why the first profession ever must have been farming because uh, it doesn't matter who you are or where you are, what you do. Eat, you must. Yeah, true. Yeah, even if you are trying to kill yourself. Hey, how's the white monopoly in the farming space? Of course, in South Africa, farming is a... Um, is, is, is the backbone of, of the Africans' economy, mm. okay? Yeah, and um, they're not doing anything illegal. They just put in the work. They put in the hours, they're putting in the research, they put their money on their block, they put their lives on, uh, on the line because it's very dangerous to be a white farmer in this country, you know? Uh, Wait, so that's a fact. Yeah. What do you mean it's dangerous? I yeah, mean, you, you, can, you, get, 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 you get killed. Don't black farmers get attacked? Yeah, my dad was attacked last year. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. read about that. Yeah, but they don't get attacked. They get killed. You know? And uh, a farm is isolated, okay? Mm. There's no neighbors. Your Mm. next door neighbor is like five Five kilometers away. away. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. Then all farmers get attacked based on the fact that they are solitary. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's so happens that most farmers are white. Yeah, so they're not getting attacked because they are white farmers. Yes. they're getting attacked because they are farmers. Yes, and they, they are lo- alone yeah. in the yeah, and they are rich. Bush. <laughs> and they got they're rich. Yeah. So you wouldn't say it's dangerous to be a white farmer just to be a farmer. No, but because uh, demographics show us that it's more white farmers that get attacked, mm. means they could be targeted. Mm. I, mm. Wow, we can't we can't rule out uh, a political motive. Hmm. We can't. Crazy man, you can't. Is it political or it's just crime? Like I can get robbed, yeah, shot dead outside. The yeah. crime is there, it, and it's, it's not going up. My race, but you can't rule out the political motive. Hmm. There's history in this country. We live it every day. So, with that said, then, what's your opinion on uh, the whole Julius song, "Kill the Farmer"? Yeah, it's. I think it's irre- irresponsible. Hmm. I think it's irresponsible for him to be doing that um, for whatever um, um, he's trying to achieve with it. But I feel it's irresponsible because um, it's people's lives on the line. We are mm. not at war here. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, if literally we were at war, there'll be something else as a war chant. But in today's times, um, South Africa, we've always been teetering on the brink of disaster. Since ninety-four, <laughs> people right. will be saying this country will be down and out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when you sit down with, with white farmers, what are they saying? White farmers are the coolest man. They wow. just want to get work done. For real? Yeah, I mean, a lot of black farmers you'll see who have become very successful, not a little successful. I'm talking billionaires. Okay, none of them can ever claim to have made it without white farmers helping them. Ah, none. Not even one. So, so where, farmers, where, where, where is this racism coming from that we see on social media? But like, is it the farmers? 
Hmm. No, it's you city people well, there was who are two, taking farmers. Now, now in Brits, for example, two yeah. farmers were caught yeah. with a body. Yeah. We've seen the video of a that. guy being put in a coffin as well by yes. farmers. Yeah. We hear a lot of farm workers yeah. saying, yeah. you know, they, 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 the they, cruelty, they, yeah. the cruelty yeah. that they are being met Miss with men, yeah, by yeah. farmers, yeah. their yeah. bosses. Yeah. yeah, And the, the, they pay them shit. Like, they're rich, but pay the guys 2,000 a month, yeah. some of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Um, Go around and ask black farmers and their workers, and if they are getting like a uh, steak for lunch or something, they're mm. worse off. Mm. Okay, so nobody's trying to profile what black farmers are doing. Mm, mm, it's the mm. same. Doesn't make it right though. No, it doesn't. It's, it's wrong. Mm. It's wrong. It's just, it's just that it, it's an industry thing. It's not a racial thing. Mm. You know, and I'm not here to protect. Uh, yes, of course. of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you speak in your reality, yes. what you observe. Yes. So, yes. what do you say about people that say if black people got all the land back yeah. within a day, it'll yeah. turn into shits? We'll be uh, uh, it's giving Zimbabwe vibes. Yeah. You know, with yeah. what happened yeah. there with their farms. Yeah, I mean, if you look at um, how industrious Zimbabweans are generally mm. here in South Africa, they do just about everything. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, you would have to believe that certainly they can farm. Mm. So, what is uh, collapsing the country. It's the sanctions. It's the lack of capital because farming is expensive. Oh. Okay? You can be a hard worker. You can have all the knowledge if you have no access to capital and proper capital, okay? Because wild farmers, they don't talk to ordinary bank, what was there. They talk to the, farm, the bank manager, hmm. okay? Because they are holding the food security of the country in their hands. You can have all the gold and all the money and all the, but if there's no food, we have a disaster. Yeah, that's true, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so true. Yeah, uh, the quickest this country can become hell is for people to not have food. So if the white farmers leave, we'll be fine in SA. If the white farmers leave, we, then we are going to enter civil war. Hmm. Because people are going to come into your house to get food. The hungry will eat the rich. So I'm going to eat soul. If you're hungry, you will eat soul. <laughs> It looks you'll finish yummy. me, dog. <laughs> you'll know where to start, boy. You'll, you'll, you'll finish me, man. <laughs> Yo, that that's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that's the quickest way you can... And there's nothing else that can make this country, like, uh, uh, it's hurting people here. But the quickest we can get to a very abnormal situation is for mm. people not to have food, okay? This is why our government is making efforts to have these 350 grants, and we don't like them as taxpayers, but let the people go hungry. Mm. Then you will see. And we are very close. Mm. Very close. Very close. The poverty in this country is real. And uh, people don't have the skill to grow their own food. People can keep 10 chickens in the backyard and a little plot and to sustain themselves. People literally depend on going to the store to buy food. Because of all the malls in the township. Mm. Because of how we have been socialized. Okay. But in my entire life, I've only seen like one agricultural university. Yeah. I think it was around Taung, but in the yeah. northwest, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah so we should have more of those kind of things. The college, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I mean, uh, there are a lot of ways. Um, you know, construction is a huge opportunity in terms of uh, infrastructure development. And, and of, us, of course, IT and, uh, you know, uh, the entertainment business, where we're going with internet now. There's growth everywhere. But um, I think agriculture has the easy as the low-hanging fruit to reach the uneducated and the poorest of the pro, especially those who are in far-flung areas. Hmm. There's nothing you can't do in agriculture anywhere, including even in the city, okay? We can grow roof, food on our roofs. We can grow food indoors. I know we grow only wheat indoors, but hmm. we could actually grow food indoors. Uh, we can do it, it just about anything. So, um, where, where are you at right now in terms of your journey into farming? Are you where you want to be or is there still more you want to Dude, you achieve? know, I'm in the game 20 years and I'm like at 15%. Fuck me. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not because uh, it's uh, mainly because I'm a scatterbrain. I could have made better decisions. Uh, and um, But I've learned a lot. Yeah? Yeah. I've so 100%, what does 100% look like? And 100% is two, three generations down the line. Ah. Wow. Yeah. My grandkids or great grandkids. Yeah. So it's not more land. No, mm. it's just more hard work. Mm. Um, because of my socialist um, leaning and so on, I've always been on this Chakavara thing. Like, I don't need land, man. What I need is product on the land. Mm. I don't. I don't need to own land. I don't want to even own land. Okay. I just want the product on the land. 
whether I'm leasing the land, whether you are farming and giving me your product, doesn't matter. That's where I'm, I'm at in terms of in this is and then when you when you reach out to these politicians you have a conversation like you have now what mm-hmm. what are they saying what do they say to you <laughs> which politicians man you know i've always found that it's very difficult especially in agriculture because um you find a lot of our comrades they want quick turns things mm-hmm. that can happen now and It'll be a kickback next oh, weekend, yes, you know? Yes, yes. Now, when you talk farming, it's like you're talking two generations. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'll call you, bro. Yes, yes. <laughs> Bright ideas. <laughs> yeah. Wrong time. Yeah. So, you know, uh, um, it is what it is. My MEC back home, um, agriculture MEC, uh, Des Bomohono, she's like a sister to me. We've been for a very Lovely. long, long yeah. very long, long time. She's very open-minded and um, I've never been out there stand, give me, give me, give me, give me, you know. It's just, I've always loved the idea that um, her home is open to me. I can go in anytime, nice. yeah, sit wow. and have a discussion about this, that, that development. Um, you know, as a, as a Shakovara guy, I've never been believed in stealing from the people. Mm. You know, mm. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that. Mm. There's a video going around, um, some guys in the hood, they're calling some official from the government who happens to be my friend? I'm like, yeah, people think I'm rich mm-hmm. for some reason because um, it's easy to. Uh, Are you rich though? I'm so poor, bro. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I'm a socialist as well. Yeah. yeah. Poverty doesn't define me. I got you. Yeah, I'm defined by my ideas. You said you were gonna tell us why you wanted to come to why you had to come to Joburg. Yeah. So my idea really was always to move up vertically in the um, value chain because the agriculture value chain is farmers, then processors, which is the food packers, then it's the wholesalers, okay, who are distributing, and then it's the retail guys. Farmers, they earn the least, okay? You farm your cabbage, 12 weeks to keep it on land from the time of seedling. I'm not even counting the seedling time from germination to seedling. From seedling to cabbage, it's 12 weeks. Okay, we say 10, between 10 and 12 weeks, mm. okay? You have to water it, you have to fertilize, you have to prepare the soil first, you have to hire somebody to do that all the time, pay for your electricity, you know, ask them doing what it's doing now. And um, after those 12 laborious weeks, you go to sell your cabbage. And somebody says to you, I'm paying you six rand for this cabbage. What are you gonna do? You take the six rand. Yeah, you can't take it back home. Mm. You can't sell it to someone else. Once you've taken it off the field, it's dying now, you know? So you get rid of it. By the time so goes to whatever supermarket to go buy a cabbage, how much is it? 12 rand. It's 20 rand. Mm. Go there today and check how much your cabbage is. So what happened between 6 rand and 20 rand? Mm. Very chain. Who's the Transport. The... Who is... The question that we don't ask ourselves is people, the government and everybody always say, black people go back to farm, you make money, but they don't talk about the value chain. Who's, who's between the six rand and the 20 rand? Mm. Who's making that money? There's somebody sitting in an office somewhere, typing something, moving product from one end to the end and making all the money. Okay. Without even watering a single cabbage. No. And uh, all the people, they always say, black farmers, go to the land, go farm. We'll give you back your land. Get your five hectares, two hectares. But show me the black retailer. Mm. Where's the black retailer? As the black farmer, when you go now and you get 100 hectares to plant maize, what are you, where are you going to take your maize? Mm. Pick and pay. Yeah. Oh. Who's making pop? Something that we eat all the time. Who's making it? Mm. Who's, who's, who's milling your pop? Mm. Go into White your supermarket fire, where yeah. you live here today and walk all 20 of those aisles and find the black product. And, you get in, you, and it's not like there aren't any black uh, suppliers. Or producers, no, or yeah. producers. It's just that they won't let you in there. No. You go into any supermarket today, I promise you when you live here, go in any supermarket just down here, uh, move mm. forward, and, and, and find a black product. From the fresh produce to the meat to uh, cop popcorn. Zero. Nothing. Zero. A few. Very Zero. Nothing. few. Zero. Ah, man, there's no more fire, man. There's no more fire in retail. 
Is it? No. No, well, Boone says he's just made a deal with, yeah. with Checkers and them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. so big up to them. Yeah. 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 But they're very few. I there's get the point being is. made here. Yeah, there's nothing. Alcohol is much easier, bro. Alcohol is much easier. Yeah, I mean, you know. To put on the shelves is much easier. It's much so easier. Yeah. When you, with the network you have, you know, amongst your other farmers, which yeah. happen to be yes. white Afrikaners, yes. doesn't that make it easier for you to get your products in retail? Yeah, that's why people always say. They're like, Mo, you have this product, man, and you have created this package. Why aren't you trying to get into um, pick and pay pick and pay and stuff? I'm like, dude, I want to be the pick and pay for black farmers. Yeah. This is why I started the journey I started 20 years ago. Okay. I came up into the game to create a brand that will become the biggest food black brand in this country. Let's do it, man. Okay? Yeah, let's so, do it, let's man. Store, bro. Let's do it. See? So, right now at the present moment, I'm probably about two weeks away from opening in Cajiso. Ah! Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buckwild oh, is speaking up. What so, is it called, man? Buckwild. Buckwild. Yeah, Buckwild, like a hip hop term, Buckwild. Can you do deliveries, man? I mean, Centurion, bro. I can't do drive to Cajiso. For everyone. Every Next. This is what the basis of this business is. Look, Buckwild. I've studied this wow. business in and out, okay? Beautiful. So, Love it, man. From like, 2014 or so on, I started developing uh, the packaging, the branding, trying to put it out there, yeah. trying to see how it worked. And then I had an uh, opportunity to get into spas in Bloemfontein. I also got into pick and pays and so wow. on. But, man, they don't take you serious, man. Yeah. Yeah, they'll never take you serious, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I'm off fire. has been doing so well for so many time, years, but... Only now they and, get and, into and, 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 and doesn't if you get in, they won't allow you to bring your other brothers. No. You must be the only... You must be the only, the only one. Black. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, oh. Who was the guarantee that uh, Checkers is going to put uh, more fire in the front? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, they have to put prime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is not even a prime. It's scary. Yeah. 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 Well, do you really think they're going to put no, it in the front? No, it's because there's a white person who bought the rights to prime in SA. Yeah, in SA, yeah. So they're making but money. In all honesty, we all want to look out for our brothers. Yeah. Why is it wrong for them to look out for their brothers? Yeah. Why would Pick and Pay, that's been running for 1967, Dump the farmers that been supplying them since time to make space for you, McG. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So, Kahiso, where's this place, man? Do you have a where's website? Wilder, way, though? way, yeah, way. Yeah, it's right in the middle of the township called Zulu Jampo. Um, it was an old uh, it's a supermarket that used to be owned by the uh, Joko family. Uh, I think they built it in 1989. When I walked into the store to lease it, there was a uh, a poster written by the matriarch. You know, she said, you know, after 32 years of service, thank you guys for. And I was like, 32 years? This mama has been opening here at 6 o'clock every morning for 32 years. Wow. It's commitment, commitment, commitment. Long yeah. hours, seven days a week. Are we really ready as a people to really take on those spaces and compete? Okay? And all the stuff in there is your stuff? Where? In the store? In the store. Yeah, that's what, no, no. What will happen is um, when I open, okay, uh, the first store, like I say, yeah. um, um, I have a portion yeah. in Ranfontein okay. where I'm beginning to farm there. Got Fortunately, you. Uh, they've given me a space too. Got you. And then, you know, um, there's another farm in Talton. I'm talking to some guy, my, my cousin Sabel is farming there. There's another guy, Bruce. He has a farm somewhere else. So I was just trying to connect the guys around you. Got you. Because my biggest network is in back in the north. Yes, yeah? yes. Yeah, but the whole idea of creating a retail is to open space for my brothers oh, and sisters beautiful. to come into the game, okay? Oh, yeah, so that it's I not even about me. one store. It has to be the first black um, franchise mm. that, that is in every hood. Mm. Okay? Yeah, uh, man, yeah. yeah. I always look back and say, why is Richard Maponia's store not a franchise? Mm. Instead, it, his name has become a mall that's full of white people inside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I can't blame him. I understand where he came from and how far he's pushed the boundaries. Mm. Instead of pointing fingers, it's time for me to take, take the, the baton and yeah, and push it to the next level. Wow. That's why I say two generations because I don't think I'll reach the level of food lovers market in my lifetime. Sure. But we need to push there. Yeah. You know? yeah. And what I've realized in the in the meantime is. Um, people like it, you know, like, yeah, you're doing great, Mo. Like, okay, Come support. put a million, mm. put a million in the table, let's push. Oh, mm. uh, you know, ish, ish, my brother, ish, ish. Nobody wants to risk their money for something that is our own. Mm. Okay? Bro, tell me with the fruits, ne? Yeah. Why do the Woolies ones taste different from No, they don't. For real. Yeah. It's the lights. <laughs> it's 
a cool air. Hey, a bond up, bro. Bond doing this. It's the packaging. It's the same fruit set. It's the same tamati that you are buying at the taxi rank. <laughs> no way. Uh, but number grades. How do the grades work? The grading. And what the f- it's determines the grading? It's just big English, bro. It's just big English, okay? Yeah, it's just Grade big English. Yeah, it's just big English, bro. It's big English. It no, the nice. grapes are seedless, though. Yeah, I mean, uh, Willis has farmers, okay? okay. Uh, that everyone, like... Uh, uh, checkers, they work through Freshmark. Okay. Uh, Freshmark does their fresh, fresh produce, and um, then they have their farmers that produce for them. Mm. Pick and Pay also has their own farmers mm. that mm. they are supporting and so on. Mm. But even Woolies have their farmers. Mm. Um, you will find that you'll find different kind of products to other stores because Woolies tends to import things from Israel. Oh. So okay. even the grapes, the seedless ones. Yeah. yeah, some of the products that you'll find that you don't find anywhere else. Yes. They're imported. Okay. Mm. Yeah, you know, and the, the people with BDS, B, is the BDS was fighting it all the time, but it's neither here nor there. But even the people who are in the country doing like uh, specialized farming, they will be attached to such markets. Got you. Yeah, then they will get um, what it's worth. Mm. What mm. Their, 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 their rent's worth, you know. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's very easy to, if you are the right guy doing the right thing to go and say, hey, Mo, you know, I'm growing snails. Yes. You know, mm. who eats snails, but... Uh, there's a gap, there's, there's a market. A gap. Mm. Yeah, and then I can make space for you. So this is what I really want to get my mind into creating such a thing, you know, for my brothers to be able to come up with such crazy ideas. And yeah, say, they haven't oh. figured out Mashonjas yet. They're you see what I'm call saying? It something else. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? They're making Mokunya the pe- now. Uh, they're making Mokunya. Oh, yeah, they're going to Mokunya. Oh, 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 and our fun was like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah fry or something. <laughs> ah, so fun, not only right. will they move into issues like Maguinas, <laughs> but they are actually fighting to come into the township and the villages. Oh yes, Woolies, yeah. It's not, not a... well, not Woolies, but everybody else. I mean, you save mm. um, quick, quick something. P- pick and pay now. Quick, quality save. Yes. Quality save. Checkers has been with you save and yeah. they contain it. Yeah, they, the they rebrand a bit, but they know. You know why they want to go there? Mm. Because where does all the grand money go? The food in the castles, in the hoods, in the hood, yeah, in the hood. Oh, yeah, 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 in the hood and in the villages. And who's taking all that money? Is the foreign nationals? But my friend, yeah, they take all of it, and it's the billions. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger, yeah. It's billions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the big guys. So that's why they're the creating so many time. malls. That's why. That's why they have to go there, uh, you know, to go collect the tax money that they pay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That's wild. That is wild. So, so there's a race for that for that market. Yeah, and it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you know. So if and we to are get, not and comp- to get space in those malls, you are tough, See? Eh? tough, bro. It's tough. It's tough because by the time the mall is built, all the it's tenants, full. it's full. Yeah, bro, the they're already they're already uh, not even auctioning, but they're already selling space in malls, malls that, that aren't built. Yeah. That will be built in the next five years. Yeah. So this thing is not racial. You know, when um, Ackerman bought Pick and Pace, things started with four stores in Cape Town. Yeah, four. Yeah. And at that time, he had been fired by Checkers. But Checkers was big because it was almost, I think it started in 55. <coughs> so Checkers was the big store in the country at the time, in 67. So he, he had ways, you know, that he had landed in the States of undercutting them, you know. Um, buying stock well in advance so that when prices go up, he has stock and then he sells it and undercuts them in prices, you know? And um, then they made a, then, you know, Checkers came up with a model of saying, look, uh, Ackerman is only in Cape Town. We have stores across the country. In Cape Town, we are going to bring down our prices and work at a loss yeah. to kick him out of the game. Whoa. Okay? Just to work him out. So, and um, how he conquered that is then he quickly ran to uh, PE found another store mm. to go find to make them fight on you know mm. light all the yeah, yeah. light light a lot of fires mm. so yeah, yeah. so they can fight on on many fronts you know and from there then he moved into Joburg and they had to find but point is it's the capitalist system it's nothing to do with race okay it's not about a black or white thing it's the game hmm. okay yeah uh, in the capitalist system. Um, they eat the rich, they eat the poor. If you go into the farming business, you'll see how many white farmers are actually um, getting out of business. No way. Because the risk is so high. No way. Okay, one mess up, one drought, one 
disaster. You are out. Oh, yeah. Just, and guess who's buying them out? Uh, the rich, the bigger farmers. Otherwise, the farmers. richer farmers. They buy them and they become their farm managers and what what. And, That's wild. Uh, you know, man. and it, it, in their space, That's it's Bakwa. You know, I come up to the Bakwa thing because people are like, ah, just name me a man, Kamla Mukasi. But Bakwa has always been about, um, you know, this whole breaking the back thing from the slavery uh, era when when. And, you know, uh, the term backwall just means uncontrollable. You know, I don't want to be controlled. Mm. I, I'm not owned by anybody and uh, um, I want to change things. Mm. Uh, what, is the, what is the term? Um, I get what you mean. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, you yes. know, it, it, it's just about changing the status quo. Disruptor. Yes. Yeah, disruptor. Mm. That's the word, you know. That's the term backwall, where it comes from. But the way I spell it with the B-A-K, uh, it comes from... My dad's farm, which is Bakao. Oh, you both are rappers. So, oh, so, so. Yeah. So, no, so we took man. the words are your so, love language. So, you know. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So, so, so that's where we are. I think in about two or three weeks, we'll yeah. be opening up. Oh, no, and, uh, man. Once I'm operational, I think I'll go online. Bro, you need, to ma- you need to make more noise about that, man. That is huge, bro. Yeah, bro. That's, that's why great. I thought to myself, you know, these brothers, man, Banzola guy, you know, put me on. And I always say, people, um, Choppies, you guys know Choppies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Choppies, yeah, they big in Botswana. Yeah, Choppies, I mean, started like around 2000, you wow. know? Yeah, wow. and um, this guy, he just, he just rocked up from a plane, uh, uh, came with his sandals like they normally do, and saw an opportunity. Built the first one, built, and right now they have over 250 oh, stores in Sadek. That's insane. Within Choppies, the 20 is, who owns Choppy? Choppies? Eh? Yeah, who some family from? Botswana, some, I think, yeah, I think they're Indian, I'm not sure. Wow. Oh, wow, wow. Yeah, but uh, that since... Goes back to what he's saying, saying, it's not a race thing. No. Yeah, it's like yeah. who's willing to put in the work. Yeah, yeah. Willing, put in the work, yeah. yeah. I mean, even, in, even here in South Africa, who, who really owns the retail is, 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 the, is the Asians. Okay? We just see the big brands because they are big shows and easy to target them. The Asians or agents? Asians, Asians, like the Pakistanis, the, the Bangladeshis, uh, and, and of course the indentured in the Indians have been here all around. When you go to my town in Muff Town, the whole town is owned by Indians. Every store in every street. Wow. You know, you and know, they're quiet. No, mm. they're quiet. Mm. They're very quiet. Chowing all that money. Yeah, well, mm. they do business, but I, all the time I always say to my people, where is the CSI? Where is the CSI? Where are these people building a school, a clinic, or putting mm, up bursaries? Mm, 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 mm. They just take all the money and go. Mm. So why are we expecting other people to do our job? It's me who's supposed to open Backwild and give black kids bursaries to go to school. Mm. And learn farming and learn agriculture. That's it. That's it. We have to put our hand up as South Africans and, and, and occupy spaces and, and stop pointing fingers. And just get things done, you know? So we don't do that. We spend a lot of time uh, finding faults, which is what's really bringing us um, where we are right now, you know? And, um, but I have, I have hope for this country because, uh, man, this is like the greatest place to be on earth. Yeah, it is. Let me tell you why. It is. In 2005, when I released Fog Off, okay, I had a meeting with some big, big, big shot comrade. Um, you know, it, there was the time of Tabombeki. And there was order in that time. We just didn't say things and like people mm. do now. Um, and we had a long discussion about it. Yeah, but what, what, yeah, but what, what, what. And I gave all my reasons why I wrote the song and what, what, and how I'm influenced by Tupac and what, what, and, and all of that. And, you know, at the end of our discussion, because, uh, you know, rappers, you won't, you won't out debate us. I will debate you forever. So he said to me, you know, the problem, there's the problem with this country because there's too much freedom here. There's just way too much freedom. Um, if you had been anywhere else, including just here in Swaziland or Botswana or even Lesotho here, they would have dealt with you big time yeah. already by now. Yeah. I'm not even talking about America or Russia or just here. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's Only true. in you this country. You don't drop a song like that in Zim. No, no. No, you can't. Are you crazy? Yeah. No, it won't even last. Oh, you wow. won't see the next morning. Yeah. Yeah, they would have picked you up and you would never be heard of it. Ever again. Gone. That's it. You, you'll disappear. You'll go na- lie next to your cabbage. You'll be swimming with the crocodile. We'll find you there next week. Yeah. <laughs> Still lying with the same cabbage. So, so you know, and, and then, then I realized at that point that, uh, you know, there's something unique about our democracy and the way it is, mm. you know? Even though we are too free, 
but it creates something that Africans have never had. Mm. A chance to check themselves out. Mm. You have to check yourself in this country because you can just overdo things. Mm. There's a guy who came here once and started talking about smashing people and <laughs> now he's in trouble. Okay. <laughs> so you have to check yourself in this country. Nobody's going to check you out. That made it to the farms. Yeah, yeah. That episode. Nah, you guys are big. <laughs> I was taking some of Chup Chup Pak Wild. Send me as the ends, really. Only healthy food. Veggies and apples, fruits, fresh bodies. So I realized at the time that we have something very unique here. Mm. Uh, you have a, a government that is actually willing to allow us to say whatever the hell we want. Mm. You know, we had 10 years of Jacob Zuma where people said all kinds of horrible things to him. Not once he, he ever, even in parliament, he just laughed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it just shows you the kind of caliber of leadership we have in this country. Mm. Tolerance. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's not tolerated anywhere else. Mm. Uh, there's some kids that try to do that thing in Botswana of uh, disrupting parliament. Hey, they got hit. <laughs> hey, quickly. For real. Quickly. The EFF. Yo, yo, yo. yo. <laughs> ah, they didn't see it. <laughs> they didn't even make it to parliament. <laughs> yeah, and they dealt with them fast. <laughs> <laughs> Swift. <laughs> so in this country, yeah. uh, you have that space to, 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 to express yourself. And this is what makes it the greatest country. In Africa, you know, especially as a black person, especially as a black person, there's an opportunity. If you want to build a black wild, go ahead. Go ahead. You'll struggle to do whatever, but no one is going to stop you. Yeah. There's no law that stops yeah. you for being. That's so true. Yeah. Man. If you want to be a MacG and build the biggest podcast in this country, do it. Get no, yourself some data and push. But South Africans would rather go on Twitter and talk about yeah why this podcast doesn't work, mm. yeah. but not build their own. Yeah. Since you know, I get it. Yeah. I mean, you know how to do a podcast. Uh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, go do your own. Let's see how many numbers your, you get. Yeah. Let's go. Build your <laughs> own like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do your thing. Yeah, you see, that's what I'm saying about this finger pointing that we yes. have, which is so bad, you know? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I interact a lot of with white farmers, of course, you know? And um, <coughs> growing up, I was playing rugby at school, and it, we had this, this serious hate for these white people because it was a war every time. <laughs> this is before yellow cards and red cards, you know? Yeah. And, um, and growing up and getting to learn them, you know, uh, there's a guy that I, 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 I'm working with now, Robert, uh, the Pretorius families, you know, and he comes to me and he says, uh, Mo, my granddad told me that he was working with uh, the Morula family, which is my family, yeah. in the 1950s. Wow. And my, my granddad told me that, and my dad told me uh, he was working with your dad and your uncles and what, what, from the 70s and so on. And uh, I come here today because... My family has told me you are good people. Hmm. And uh, for that reason, put my money on the table. Let's go. Hmm. Just like that. Beautiful. Yeah, we don't even get it among us black people. No, never. Who's going to do that? No. No, we don't. Is this the money that's funding Buckwild? No, the no, white no. Money? no, no, no. Buckwild is funded by black money. Big up to all the people who are putting in money in Buckwild. Um, but even if it was, bro, it's yeah. a good cause. Yeah, no, I'll take, I'll I take guess. it. I'll yeah. take it. It's not, a, it's not a race thing, like I say. Yeah, 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 yeah. If Robert wanted to put but money remember, in Buckwild... But remember, he who funds something owns it, you know, depending on what deal oh, you yeah, have. Yeah, true, 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 true. But true, true. it's no different to what I'm going through right now, you know? Every time you go out there, you look for an investor to come and bring money. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we just... Oh, uh, just, just is that fan not too loud, man? No, we asked him earlier, said it's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're back on. Uh, you come with a great idea. Mm. You put it on the table, like, I want to do a podcast, guys. Put in some money. And it's like, okay, I'll put in some money, but now you don't shoot in run back. Now you must shoot in... Mm. So you, like, dude, mm. I just asked you to put in the money so we can get going. Mm. Not for you to change the whole seating. Mm. Change the table, it must be red. It's like, just yeah. believe in someone, give them the opportunity to push. Mm. Don't now take over the idea and try to make it yours. And that's even black people do that, you know? Mm. Yeah. So um it's been very difficult to find investors to come on board, but I'm still open, you know, like I'm sure. trying to build a So what you saying, something. all the shit you talk about, uh, ANC and stuff, they would have gotten rid of us a long time ago. Yeah. In another country. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you must realize that when you go home today, you must realize actually, <laughs> yeah. if it was anywhere in this continent, even in Namibia there, yeah. I, I would have not And we trash talk them, dog. Yeah, that's true. That's you true, would have bro. not made it past the first month. Mm. Yeah, and that's the reality of where we're living. And then I realized uh, for myself that... No, uh, but you know what? I was, I, was, I was actually watching a clip. Trevor Noah was doing yeah. an interview on 702. Yeah. And he said it's not much trash talking. It's just that South Africans are used to a standard and uh, 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 caliber. Yeah. So when people don't meet that, yeah. they'll call them out for it. Yeah. So it's not really much trash talking. It's just checking up, checking our... 
politicians nope. in to no. say we used to electricity. Why is there no electricity? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, but, uh, I, I get that. In the context of the world, especially on this continent, it's just too much freedom. You couldn't even <laughs> ask me. You can't even, there's no electricity in Nigeria. Yeah. But you try and go talk, 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 talk. <laughs> the soldiers can't pick you up. And that's it. No, I get you. You see what I'm saying? Mo, let's come back to the music, man. Okay. Hip hop, who you fucking with with the new guys, man? Hey yo, hey, yeah, you put me in a blind spot, bruh. But you know, I'm always following Mutokolistas, first of all, because they're my homies. Hash one, um, I don't know why the game is sleeping on Hash One, you know. Uh, there's this group Hash One. Um, they're doing amazing stuff, you know. Um, I'm loving what they're doing. There's this kid called Streets, it's coming up. Um, he's doing some nice stuff. This kid called VX, you know, it's good. I've been also messing with these Pretoria boys. I think like uh where they come from, you know, Motoko was very big in Pretoria mm. in the early days, you know, because because they could hear the language. Mm. They really fucked with what we were doing. And seeing them turn the whole style into a Pretoria thing now, it's, it's amazing, you know, what, did, what 25K are doing. Would you say vocalistic is Motoko, eh? No. No, he's not. Okay. Maglera? You fucking with him? Yeah, yeah, Maglera is... He's Motoko. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, uh, but Maglera, they come and say uh, they have their own style in text they call it Strata. Um, mm. yeah, oh. it's our own start, you know. So, but what is really Mutsuako is we've always had that debate. Is it Setswana rap or a certain type of Setswana rap? Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, or can you do Mutsuako in Pedi or in Zulu or in Kosa? Mm. Uh, do you, can you still call it Mutsuako then? Or is Mutsuako a Mavtown thing? Mm. Is it something that only Mavtown guys do? Because mm. there's a big Mutsuako in, 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 in Botswana. But it has it has never gained the same prominence. You remember about Zeus mm. were coming up back in the days, yes. or Sky and so on. But it it, 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 it seems like um, the, the fields had have never leveled out. Mm. So Mutoko remained a subgenre. More than a subgenre, it it, it had really became like an elitist kind of genre. Yeah, I get you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's why it never grew. Or... Yes. Okay, yeah. I get that's you. why it, it never really grew beyond the five, six, seven mm. people who were doing mm. it. You know, mm. and. Um, it's very difficult, uh, well, not difficult, but it to be disingenuous to not, <clears throat> uh, as much as I wouldn't want to, but I have to mention Casper. Yeah. Because Casper is a Mutsakolista yeah. from his origins. I don't think we'll see another Mutsako guy like Casper in a yes. while. Yeah. But do you know what is the funny thing? Casper has never come out and said Mutsako. Ever. Oh, yes. He Whoa, has wait, it. wait, no Shit, way. He has no. It. He has it. Yeah. No, since yeah, then he never... was, it, where, since he blew up himself. Isn't like the whole Prince of Mufftown and Mutuako. What is Prince of Mufftown? A gig he does, like, I don't know, once every year, yeah. annually. No. Uh, it's not the, Prince of Mutuako. It's pr Prince it's of true. Mufftown. Wait, Casper Nieves has never said Mutuako. No. No. Never since, not since that, he's blown does up. Does Mutuako feel like they, they are old? Casper say no, Mutuako? No, no, no. Casper put in the work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, when Casper first moved in, he stayed with me and Tumelo in my place there in 2000. He stayed with you as well? Yeah. Can't do, who did he not stay with? <laughs> well, who did we not all stay with? We uh -huh. all lived like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your family, yeah. Yeah, we all lived like that. Everybody has lived at Tasso's house. Everybody has lived yeah, at Jebba's yeah, yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, and when I got my own house, uh, Morafi at some point had a what they call Morafi House. And at any given point, there were 20 people living wow. there. You know, uh, rappers, uh, graphic designers. and So we always had that, um, Shit, we used to call it um, embassy. And right now, I, idea, you know, we get our guys, they come stay with us, help them get into the game. You wow. know? Yeah, and right yeah. now, everybody's just doing their own thing by themselves. Yeah, I think, um, like I say, you know, Casper was the last and, uh, uh, and we we're so happy that he became so successful because yeah, yeah. he epitomizes that era. Mm. You know, and yeah. um, he fortunately joined Jebba at the height of his game. Yeah, so he you know, learned everything. What I learned from Jebba mm. and what he learned is two different things. Mm. Yeah, you know, he mm. came in when uh, uh, yeah. Jebba was yeah. that big, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the education he got from him. Is he still practices those things today. You even till today, yeah, you, you know, tell. even how he markets himself. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. he gave him all his blueprint, you know, mm. and uh, so he was fortunate to that. But the best thing he ever did for himself is never to walk away from this limitation of Motoako. Mm. Okay? And just do hip-hop. Just put himself... But I wish he gave him oh, a thicker skin, I man. Because he's very emotional, Casper, man. <sighs> very emotional. Isn't it a rapper thing, though? 
Nah, he's worse, rap, bro. Because he's saying, but rappers should get it because rappers generally dish it out. And yeah. you grow up under rap, battling, yeah. very competitive. Yeah. It's a contact sport, hip hop. Yeah. So you you don't expect someone to be that sensitive coming yeah. from that yeah. sport called hip hop. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's enough to just big him up for yeah. what he has done <laughs> for me. But that's just about it. Drop him. I can't go beyond <laughs> giving him his price. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got a question, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, farming, bro. Like, so if one wants their kid to get into farming or yeah. someone says, you know what? Yeah. I've always been fascinated. What, what's my first step, you know, to immerse myself in that world? Uh, you just drive by any of these streets, you find these guys who are selling these flower things that are designing these guys that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go out there to a nursery, buy yourself some pot, uh, the potting soil. And uh, go into even a supermarket anywhere, buy seeds. Put seed in soil, cover it, put water, you're a farmer. Wow. Finish. Oh, just start in your backyard. Start. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love yeah. that. You know, Love that. You're they don't make farmer, it seem like that's no, no, brain no. surgery. If you're a real like, farmer, yeah. the food that starts in that little thing, and you see I can grow this thing and I can make a cabbage. Then you can get a bigger idea. It's like, okay, maybe I must get a bigger plot. Okay, then I must get... But you started. You, you start. started. You start, you know? Love it, man. Buy two sheep. Keep them there. See if you can take care of them. Yeah. If you can't, then you know you're not a farm. <laughs> Leave it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any book recommendations? Mine. <laughs> no. Oh, you got a book? Yes, I have a book. Nice. Yeah. Damn, what's it, it called? It's called uh, A Walk in the Park, um, but it's on Amazon. Nice. So it's a PDF. Yeah. Dope. Nice. Yeah. A yeah. walk in the yeah. park yeah. by... Yeah. Bro, a lot of people are going to be asking how they can get in touch with you. I can already see it. Yeah, because people are going to want to put their stuff in Buck Wild and yeah. in Far, They want to know more about farming. Farming, yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. I answer too many questions. I'll only feel those who have money to put into Buck Wild. Then I'll respond to you. If you want to ask questions, don't call me. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> so come to Buck Wild. Go to, to the Buck government. I love your yeah. honesty, man. <laughs> don't call him. He's tired. Yeah, no, go to the government. They have answers for that. Yeah. But if you got money to put into Buck Wild, call me and uh, let's share the money. Uh, when it's all said and done, what are you going to be remembered as, man? Farmer. Mm. Yeah. I, I think uh, the essence of what I do is the farming that's in me. You know, people always say, ah, Mo, but you're sitting in the... In the city, like, being a farmer is not about having to prove that I'm wearing khakis every day. And No, it's the mentality that I have towards the idea of food security and stability, you know. So I want to be grown to, to have changed the game in terms of farming. Um, because my great grandfather was a farmer, his son was a farmer, his farm was a farmer. And when I became a farmer, I'm like, what's so different to what these guys have done? I want to do something different. I want to build a name. So one day... Kids will go out there and they'll see Buckwild as a food brand, like a ZZ2 Whew. or like, uh, like Zimba or like what other food brands, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't pay attention. Yeah. Z ZZ2 yeah. is from my hood. Eh? Yeah, yeah, massive, yeah, massive. Yeah, massive. yeah. 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 past them every time yeah. we go to vendor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. talk about them. They've got all over. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody, when you talk ZZ2, they talk tomato. But yeah. tomato grows everywhere. Everybody grows tomato. But when people think tomato, they think ZZ2. ZZ2. They think tomatoes are ZZ2. Yeah, that's, that's the power of marketing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you need to really put it in people's head that ZZ2 uh, is the go-to guy. Yeah. But for all you know, ZZ2 is buying tomatoes from Seoul. Yeah. Seoul is growing those tomatoes. They just get them, put them in their bag. Man, man. you make me want to farm when I get home, man. I'm happy that uh, every time I go out, I can convince one more person to take this up. Because today... Even though I'm not the most successful farmer out there, I know lots of very successful farmers who decided, screw this engineering. Moses farming is the way to go. I'm resigning, wow. taking my money, buying a farm. I'm doing it. And they, they've done it. A lot wow. of them, not even a few. Their kids, uh, they're not kids now, they're men. Um, in 2019, I wake up in the morning, they had my dog, knock, knock. Hey, 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 brah. Uh, we come from Town College. We just did our diploma. We need to do our practicals. We've been Motokolista since we were in grade four. We've listened to you every day. And we went to college because of you. Now we have to do our pra uh, practicals. There was nowhere in the world we were going to go but here. Wow. Wow. And I didn't even have space for them or anything to do. I even a place for them to sleep. Mm. They're like, dude, you the guy. You gave us this dream. Help us. Okay. Till today, they have graduated, of course. Uh, the government has hired them. They're working. Um, they're doing fantastic work for the food security business, uh, for a component of the department. But 
They're still my mentees, okay? Wow. They're still my mentees. We still do mentorship together. And very much, I've sold them the dream of Buckwild. That, guys, once Buckwild built, you will be able to be those farmers who are Beautiful. building this thing. Mm. And you guys can bring in more guys so we can build this thing. For long, we should be self-sufficient. We should have enough produce on our own to sustain Buckwild without going outside of our circle. Yeah. Yeah, and brilliant. it's been a 20 years building brain. So it's, you know, us as Africans, we have this unnecessary expectation that a young kid must go to school, graduate, get a job, and be defined by the age of 30. Get a wife and, you know, and that's how we dream. As a black child, you cannot say to your parents, I have a 60-year dream. They look at you like, oh, you fucking crazy. Everybody in the community, yeah. Yeah, by the time you're 30, you, you must be either having a little car and a little pontoki or you're a failure. A little pontoki? Yeah, like a little housing, you know, you must go, yeah. go, go, go get oh, a house. Because he's from the farm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every house yeah. is small. Yeah, you must get a flat or you must really show that you own daughter must, you know, yeah. or you're a failure. Yeah. And, and, and then they put you down. But you, when you look at the Chinese wall, how many years did it take to build? Mm. When do we have Chinese war as Africans saying we have a project that's going to take four generations? Mm. That means you're going to start and die without it being finished, no matter how long you live. Jesus. Do we have anything like that? We don't, bro. A pyramid, something, something. Hey. No, we don't dream like hey, that. Hey, and everybody hey. else who has... want to see it in our lifetime. No! <laughs> no! We can't water something and die for our kids to continue watering it. No. Then I'm going to water this thing and I must have the responsibility of teaching my child to water this thing because when I die, for it to happen, he must or she must continue watering this thing. Mm. That's why I'm always with my kids, okay? They hustle with me every day. Okay, they are backwilders. They're at the shop, they hate it, but even now when it's not working, they're there every they're day. downstairs. Just like... Even now they're here, yeah. Even now they're here. I, I take them with me, like my dad did with me, okay? On Wednesday when you guys go to school, my dad took me to cattle auction. So you don't have a side chick then? Show, huh? You don't have a side chick? Side chick. Mm. Hey, my man. Hey. Ooh. King. He said, chick, say, we can't talk about rap and hey, hey. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you threw me off again. <laughs> no, no, no. He, he takes his kids everywhere, so he must not have a side chick. Yeah, you no. can't. You can't, you can't there. Yeah. Fuck around. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go find out. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was in my 20s and 30s, it seems like I would live forever. And I'm 42 now, and I started to feel, especially since Jabba left, I, I really started to now feel my mortality. And I, and I think to myself, uh, this country is so dangerous and it's so violent. Anything can happen to you any day. And if I was to go now, my dream would have not even been close to being realized, mm. okay? And I can't even expect anybody to take it forward. Mm, so yeah. every day from now is a bonus. That's why I must be 100% backward every beautiful. day. Love every it, day. Love it, okay? man. Okay, I'm running out of time, really. Yeah, so, man. yeah, yeah I always think to myself, the body's creaking, the what what. <laughs> I have at least 20 more years to push. Yeah. 20 years to push. I, if I can put another 20 years of hard work, um, I know I can turn this thing around. Love it, you know? man. But... All the people who have shown me love and support all these years, my family especially, they've never doubted me, you know? My brother, my sisters, my parents. Yeah, I was like, just leave him. I think he has an idea of where he's trying to go. And that has been the biggest motivation for me to say, um, it, you know, because when you start off, you're like, what are you doing? Are you rapping? Are you fine? Are you confused? Wow. You know, and all the time I was telling my dad, look, I understand what I'm doing is confusing you. But don't impose your confusion on me. Mm. For me, it makes sense. Mm. Starts with rap the side, starts with farming the side. It builds a pyramid. At some point, rap and farming is one thing. Oh, I'm wow. different from other rappers because I'm a farmer. But I'm different from all the other farmers because I'm a top a MC. Not just a rapper. Top MC. Elite MC. One time. That's rap life for you. That's it. That's the definition of what Park was teaching me in the 90s. Mm. Okay. That's, Shout out, yeah. man. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for more Mule, man. Yeah. Shout out. Hey, I'm glad we ran out of guests, eh? <laughs> it was a beautiful yeah, one. Yeah, this man. was a beautiful so one. Insightful. Very fruitful. Yeah. It's like feeding some knowledge in your brain, you know. Just watering our brain. Yeah. yeah. Well, Shout out farm to brothers, you. Yes. Hey. Uh, you know, the responsibility of food security belongs to everyone. Doesn't matter what your profession is. The 
issue of food security is everyone's responsibility. Okay. We out of here, man. Podcast and chill. Boom. Small farm. Mm. Beautiful, man. Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Bungo yig, even when they ask you, how sabi in, do not fear. For if you do, just say, Anistivi. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.